Yesterday, I get a message from one of my friends who works in the human rights field. He's asking me for some help because there is an Egyptian man called Ahmed Sabir who was arrested, had was arrested and disappeared a month ago and then was released briefly and then re-arrested and he's disappeared again. And he was asking me for, for help about Ahmed Sabia. He asked me, he, sa he says, have you heard of Ahmed Sabia? And I, and I said, no, I hadn't heard of Ahmed Sabia. So he said, well, can you do me a favor and go find out, do some research about this man, because you should know about Ahmed Sabia. So I spent several hours figuring out who Ahmed Sabia is. When I talk to you about justice, this is exactly what it compels me and what burns me and what hurts me. So I do research on who Ahmed Sabir is and I find the following. Ahmed Sabir is a comparative religions scholar. He's a brilliant young man. Brilliant. I discovered that this man, who I didn't know about, has learned Hebrew, has learned Aramaic, does YouTube videos about ancient manuscripts of the Old Testament and the New Testament, talks about the, for, the forgeries in the manuscript tradition in the Torah and Injil in the Old and New Testaments is a brilliant man who has perfected Aramaic and Hebrew has a set of videos that teaches Arabs Hebrew. He goes through the, the alphabet, alpha, uh, Hebrew alphabet. He has studied the Talmudic tradition he engages in discussions about the history of the church, the comparative studies between the Quran and the Bible. A whole set of videos, Ahmed Sabir is responding to attacks and criticisms by evangelists and Islamophobes who attack the text of the Quran and he responds in a variety of ways. And I went through this entire thing and I couldn't figure out why the Egyptian government would arrest Ahmed Sabir. The man doesn't talk about politics at all. He doesn't talk about the peace treaty. He doesn't talk about the so-called peace treaty, the, the deal of the century. He doesn't talk about CC. He doesn't talk about revolution. He doesn't talk about Saudi. He doesn't talk about the Emirat. He doesn't talk about anything political. All he talks about is the Quran, the Torah, and, and the Injil, the, the, the Old Testament, the New Testament, and the Quran, and the history of comparative religions. Then finally, I find a video in which Ahmed Sabir talked about the following. Recently, you might, some of you might have heard of this, there, there was a, the Pope was saying, greeting people, saying hello to, to, to some people, a woman grabs the pope, the pope's hand, Pope Francis, and pulls him, him towards her. The pope lost his school and started slapping the woman's hand so she will let go. The pope apologized the next day and he said, I lost my temper. Ahmed Sabir shows this video clip and says, which is a rather obvious point. Compare this to what happened with the Prophet ﷺ. The Pope, when a woman grabbed his hand, slapped her hand away, the Prophet ﷺ was walking with Anas 
in a market, a man came and grabbed him from his collar and yanked him, and yanked him so hard it left a mark on his neck. And the man yelled at the prophet, give me some money. The prophet turned around and smiled at the man. And Ahmed Sibir was saying that the Pope reacted inappropriately when he was grabbed, he yanked a woman's head, the, 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 he slapped a woman's hand. And the, the, compare this to how Muhammad والسلام, reacted by smiling at the man that yanked him and hurt his neck. And then said, it is unfair that Islamophobes immediately celebrated the Pope's apology while anything that Muslims do that is wrong or anything in Islamic history that is negative, the Islamophobes rely on, focus on and criticize and so on and so forth. I discover after a lot of research that what happened is that Christians in Egypt the church in Egypt compared, uh, sorry, complained that Ahmed Sabir criticized the Pope for slapping the woman's hand, and because of that, he was arrested in Egypt. When a man, when people like that, a useful young man like that. I've never met Ahmed Sabir and I hadn't even heard of him before. To, 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 and it's my, my fault that I haven't. Of that level and that intellect, who has studied Aramaic and, and mastered it, and studied Hebrew and mastered it, and I was blown away by the quality of his lectures in his videos. And I am rarely impressed by anything on YouTube or anything that is on the net. And a man like that for doing what all of us can do without even a second thought, criticizing the reaction of the Pope, is arrested in Egypt and God knows what happened to him. And if you look up Ahmed Sabir and look at his picture, to, to imagine what could be happening, this man will kill you. Because he looks like a very decent, kind, quiet human being. In all his videos, he doesn't raise his voice once. Then, when I think to myself that there are still Muslims around, that say Khalid al Fadl, don't talk about Sisi in our Islamic center. When I think that still there are Muslims around that say, oh, we, we, we don't talk about injustice and we don't talk about despotism. What are you going to tell Allah? The arrest of someone like Ahmad Sabir is the arrest of every intelligent intellect in the entire Muslim world. In the same way that Allah tells us killing a single human being is like killing entire humanity. When you arrest a single intellect, you've arrested scholarship, an entire ummah. You've arrested the principle of the word. And you've preempted and aborted the possibilities of justice. When the reaction of Muslims and Arabs and, and Egyptians and non-Egyptians to an injustice, baghi, that is baghi, and baghi like that, instead of your, is asabu baghi antasirun, instead of if they are hurt by baghi, they, they in fact, overcome that aggression, conquer that aggression, if the reaction is, uh, well, that's just the way that things are, then I don't see Islam. Then there is no Islam. Then as far as I'm concerned, all those 
who can hear about something like Ahmed, the arrest of someone like Ahmed Sameer, and go on with their lives as if nothing happened. Their prayers are worthless, their fasting is worthless, their entire practice is worthless. At a minimum, at a minimum, if they cannot do anything, that their heart condemns it. Because if your heart doesn't condemn it, then there is no dharram in iman, then there is not even an ayogta of iman. At a very minimum, when you find someone speaking up, don't discourage them and don't shut them up. I will close with this. Allah challenges us. Allah challenges us to establish justice among us, to overcome zulm and baghi, to overcome injustice and aggression. Allah challenges us to institute justice through its various branches deliberative justice, distributive justice, procedural justice, and substantive justice. Allah challenges us to do so as an extension of our covenantal relationship with Allah. And as long as we do not realize that Islam is heart and soul a rebellion against injustice and oppression and despotism and suffering, then we have betrayed Islam itself. Allahumma afu anna, Allahumma aghfir lana, Allahumma arhamna, Allahumma ansur al-Islam, wahdina li akraba min hadha rashada ya Ali ya azim. Allah forgive our sins. Grant us your guidance and your light and your illumination. Allah, guide us to a better path and a clearer path and guide us to be able to uphold the virtues and morals and ethical order of Islam. Ya Ali, Ya Azim. Wa salli wa sallim wa barik ala Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabihi. Wa mitabu bihsanin ila yawm al-deen wa aqli salah.